I still gliding. Well, I'm gonna have to walk. I'm not walking. Howdy, it's Matt. And in this video is the maiden of the Zoe HD Drift. Now you'll notice me walking along a country path. That is exactly the reason why I wanted the Drift. Well, it's small, it's agile, and fits into a tiny little bag. However, there are a couple of things which you need to know about this model. I will give, give you a build overview and my summary of what I found on the Maiden at the end of this video. With that said, let's get flying. It's gonna be fun. Right, quick update in the running bag. Laminated the wings, the leading edges. Uh, laminated the wing tips because they were really fragile and I laminated the uh, vertical horizontal stabilizer at the back, just the leading edges, uh, and the bottom of the fuselage as well. That was it. Nothing more to say. Let's get it built and off we go. And by the way, that's exactly the reason why I bought this one, is because it would fit into a rucksack really, really easy, and I got the transmitter in the bottom, and I'd easily be able to fit the uh, FPV goggles in there too. So let's get it built and get going. Already lost the thumb screw. Seriously, already lost the thumb screw. There it is. Glad to give you two. <laughs> that needs to be painted a different colour because you're not going to see it once it goes in the grain. Uh, I've set it up with a 1000 mini amp here 2S battery pack uh, and calibrated ESC and put the brake on. is where it should be on the line. We'll just go check that. Yeah, CG is right on the mark underneath. Bring this together. Right, left, up, down, and no rudder. Oh, one thing I did notice is that they've got some down trim into both ailerons. Because both of them are the same, it kind of made me wonder did they do that on purpose out of the box, but we'll soon find out. There we go. You ready? Okay. Let's go. Definitely, definitely needs a bit of trim. Let's do it now with the sun. Oh, there it is. That to me feels tail heavy, but then we are in a lot of wind at the moment. We're sheltered by the um, trees behind us. There's a lot of turbulence coming over the top of the trees. Let's bring her in for a... Let's power off. She is gliding forever. Whoa! I need to get it down because it's light on it. Right, I'll take that. That's right on the CG and that's grossly tail heavy. Do you see it was coming up? Stall, stall, not very pretty. That's bang on the CG, so the battery didn't move. To make that nose heavy, because that was quite horrible. That's way, way better. I know it's getting knocked around by the wind. Give it a right trim in it. And half throttle. It's getting knocked about. Like I said, there's a lot of turbulence behind us coming over the trees going over the top. That's way better. So yeah, definitely nose heavy. Needs to be nose heavy. Super, super quiet. 
fact, I'll bring it in and just do figures of eights, because there you go. That's just tight. Yeah, third throttle. There's that second flight, and I'm what? Three, four meter, meters off the ground. Got the confidence to do that. There you go, that's quite nice, isn't it? I was really worried that I wasn't going to be able to. I was going to load it up with iNav and not get to. Oh, definitely need tons of expo when you elevate it. It's still very, very sensitive to um, inputs on the elevator, so I need reduced throws on the elevator. I think I put it on the second by, uh, outermost hole underneath. Can you even hear that? It's very cool. <laughs> yeah. Once that gets in the sky in your FPV, you're not going to see it for miles. About half what I know. That is 2S. It's a 1000 mini out for you. 2S back. Right, so I'm going to bring her around to land. She, she is getting really knocked around by the wind. Let's throttle off now. Let's full glide. I still gliding. What? I'm gonna have to walk. I'm not walking. That glide. Did you see the glide on it then? It just wasn't gonna stop. No, it wasn't gonna stop. It wasn't gonna going down, was it? Yeah. Right. Power off. Perfect. There you go. That's the right. So that's the Zo HD drift. CG definitely want to be forward to their mark line. That was very, very not pleasant to fly when we were on the CG mark. So I made it nose heavy. Uh, I'm not, well, I'll find out in just a moment. That was way, way more enjoyable. Definitely do need to tone down the elevator throws. Like I said, I'm in the second servo hole down from the outer point on there. I may be needing to be in the middle, to be honest, to. Um, to, to tone that down. I did drill out the hole because the little control horn wouldn't fit through, uh, the, the, the push rod wouldn't fit through, so I'll drill out the next one down. I think that will tone it down and put plenty of expo in the elevator as well. Besides that, really impressed. Off to go and fit iNav in there, sort out an 18650 Lion Pack as well. Let's go and check the uh, CG, am I? And there's just no weight to it at all. So, CG. It's just falling forward, so if I put my... Right, it's there. So actually, the CG for me is my nails, or your nail, in front of the CG mark. Yeah, just in front of there. Literally just in front of the CG mark, and that's spot on. So there you go, that's the Zoe HD Drift. Maiden, no flight controllers. And I kid you not, if you look up behind us, and you look at the trees, that's why the model was getting knocked around, and that's hardly anything. The the wind's really, that's why we didn't fly on this side and not the other side, because the we had a chance of a bit of calm, even if I kept it in close. But the second we got out there, it did get knocked around. So yeah, a flight controller or stabilizer would uh, definitely help. So that's the Zoe HD Drift, that's the Maiden. It was a bit scary in the beginning, wasn't it? Any questions or comments, let me know in the video description. Uh, sorry, let me know underneath this video on YouTube. Remember that bottle was brought out my own money for my own abuses and as you can tell it's about to get abused and I can fully appreciate why Mr. Newton liked that because that really did glide forever. There one thing to watch, well two things to watch out for, flimsy wingtips, which you'll see I've laminated mine along the leading edges, the bottom of the fuselage, that bottom of the shaft, uh, the fuselage and the uh, leading edges for the uh, horizontal stabiliser at the back. Uh, and the other thing to be careful of is that CG. You do you do want it just forward to the CG because it was quite ugly before. And uh, oh, the servo for the elevator. Go for the middle hole. I think you'll be fine. Plenty of expo. 50, 70, 80 expo, uh, depending on what your fingers are like. Uh, and I think you'll be absolutely fine. So there you go. So HD drift. Happy days. Cheerios. So we're back at the desk and you, I'm sure you can appreciate, I can personally appreciate why uh, Andrew was so impressed with it. 
however, there's a couple of things which you need to be aware of, uh, and I know I mentioned them just a few moments ago while I was on the flight line, but just coming back now, quickly summarise them because these are the things which I would want to know if I was in your position. Does that make sense? So the first things first is that you would definitely, and I was trying to choose my words there correctly, which is that you would definitely want to laminate or at least put some packing tape over the wingtips because they are so flimsy and because they turn downwards, if I can put the model around, you'll see that they dip downwards, they're always going to catch the ground. So definitely put some packing tape at a bare minimum on the wingtips and of course along the leading edge as well because it is such a thin, thin, let me just take it apart a moment, such, and I need Another point is that you do get a spare one of these, but I'm pretty sure you're going to lose that really quickly. So I might put a bit of white spray paint or something on top of that one because I don't. I've lost it in the field before I'd even put it together. Anyway, this wing tip, this wing cord is super, super thin. It can't be more than just over maybe 12 millimeters thick. As such, is not very strong. So I did before I took it out to fly. I did put some laminate on the wing tips and also along the leading edge. That is a mod which. I would strongly suggest that you do for yours uh, and also let me just take the other wing off as well again you'll notice I'm getting a little bit religious of putting that from the screw back in there I did also laminate the underside of the fuselage because that's where you're going to be landing and just up on the leading edge too I also laminated the bottom of the tail fin here too and of course the horizontal stabilizer now I didn't laminate the entirety of it uh, as you'll quite clearly see is that I did stop there all I was concerned I was trying to keep the weight down to absolute minimum and because the, the wings themselves are pretty strong Strong. the same for this horizontal stabilizer so the only reason why I'm adding laminate there is not for strength uh, it's just it's there to protect the leading edge uh, from just landing in normal nice mown grass let alone in a muddy field or maybe more aggressively so Laminate is an absolute must. Calibrating, uh, oh, I was really lucky with the prop. Absolutely no balancing required at all. Now, I did take some notes. Let me, let me get this right on there. Um, right, first obvious one. Josh just messaged in the group. Oh, what did I think about it, etc., etc. Uh, and the thing is, is that this is not a beginner's model. You definitely need some experience for this model because I don't feel it would take a smack nicely into the ground. This is definitely, definitely not a first time beginner's model. It's too agile uh, and you would just lose money on it. You're better off with something like a Bixler. So if you're watching this and you're a first time um, model enthusiast, obviously model enthusiast, not for you. Okay, brutally honest, it would just be a waste of your money. Go and get yourself a Hobby King Bixler or an XM floater jet, those would be perfect models for you. However, second model, third model, 50th model, yeah, absolutely. It was so peachy in the sky. I really liked it. It was genuinely really, really good fun to fly, but definitely not a first time uh, model to be ragged. Okay. Ah, center of gravity. Uh, underneath the wings, you do have this little marker just there. Clear as day, isn't it? Just there. However, I flew, the first flight was on that marker and it was scary as you like. It was not an enjoyable experience. Uh, and you'll notice that is like a good 50% of the way back the wing. If I put the ruler up against there, like so, uh, if I put this the right way around, there we go. If we're six, yeah, look at that. If, if the wing's 16 centimeters, we're at eight centimeters. That's crazy. However, on the CG mark, scary as you like. I'm, I was just pleased that I landed it. It was going up, it was stalling, it was just, oh, it was really horrible. However, literally just in front of that CG, perfect, it flew really, really peachy. So that's quite nice because I did have to bring, I was flying uh, a little 1002S battery pack, uh, and I did bring it quite far up into the nose. So that was quite promising, a, for, for two different reasons. One, that you can have, that points out that you can have some extra weight in the nose. So maybe you put your FPV camera and your video transmitter on 
this hood, that's what I've kind of already decided, that's where the video transmitter is going to go, is on the nose, try and get some separation. Uh, and number two is that with the lithium ion batteries, which we discussed in the unboxing, is that, that they will be fine probably about there inside of the model to hit CG uh, when we account for having the flight controller at the back. So yeah. That was fine, it, and it was a little bit of a, a challenge trying to fit that battery in there. There is not a lot of um, space inside of the fuselage itself. It, it Maybe in the mid part, we're talking, talking 34 millimeters, and then up towards the nose, we're talking 29 millimeters in the nose. So you are, you are going to have to be packing this light, okay? Oh, we're talking of packing. It fitted in that rucksack. Happy days. That is exactly what I wanted. I've been out running loads and loads and loads lately, lately and I have got some corking, I mean absolutely corking 10 out of 10 spots to be FPV'd. This model is like the perfect candidate because it's small, I can carry it, so I, it's small I can carry it in a rucksack. Number two, it's very agile. Okay, that was another thing to point out, is that it is definitely really good fun on the sticks. I know it apparently says in the manual you shouldn't be doing aerobatics with it, but it will turn on a dime if you need it to. And again, if I'm FPVing up a river, for example, give you a hint of some of the footage which we'll be doing shortly with this model, is being able to turn around, and excuse the dog having a shake, uh, you can see it just down there, that's Noonikins. Uh, anyway, being able to turn sharply, get in and get out within a, like a, within the edges of a riverbank is definitely beneficial. I've got multiple spots which I want to get out and get this model flying with. So we had that one. What else to be on there? Oh, be really careful. Don't make the little mistake which I made is that in here, and in fact, let me zoom in so you can see what I did so that you don't repeat what I did. Right, don't do that if that was to focus. Come on. Come on, might have to go back out again. Come on, beautiful. There we go. Right, there we go. Right, you'll notice that I put that servo, the control horn, I uh, put the push rod in the second from the outside uh, marker on there, thinking that having a little bit of movement would be beneficial. Do not fall into that trap. That was a mat mistake. You want it into the middle or center hole, or even potentially down the second one down. Uh, the reason being, it was very, very sensitive to the elevator. So I would strongly suggest that A, you use the middle hole, uh, and number two, that you put at least 50 expo into the model, into your transmitter, because you will need it. It was very, very sensitive on the elevator, and I think that might be uh, like symptoms of the but potentially we're still a little bit um, tail heavy uh, because even I brought it through brought it forward say just three millimeters that definitely did cheer, cheer it up and made it more manageable as we saw it glided for days however maybe a little bit for more forwards as well and uh, you can put a socket in it you cheeky I'm getting abuse here from behind uh, from the dog, I hasten to add. Uh, besides that, very, very simple build, like stupidly simple. It took me longer to, the, it, ignoring the laminate, and I chose to laminate mine, you see all those pieces on the desk. If you just use tape, it would take five minutes, to, no, 10 minutes to put some tape on it, okay? It, uh, and then the build of it was, the hardest bit was that I realized that that bit of plastic, and uh, that little, restraint mechanism for the push rod was up the wrong way round. Once I'd worked, that was the hardest bit for the whole build. It, it's not even worth mentioning, you know. Yeah, really like it, really nicely molded foam. I cannot wait, tomorrow, I'm, I'm in such torment. That's the daddy drack. I've got to get the daddy drack ready for tomorrow and I've still got quite a bit to do on that one. And I want to cram iNav into this one as well because I genuinely feel so those of you which are looking for a fun little line of sight model and you're slightly more more of an experienced pilot you're gonna love this it's gonna be really really good fun if you want something like this for maybe on a slope on for slope soaring on a lighter wind day brilliant really good choice as well although you'll definitely want to put some lamb on it and leading edges of the wings if you're uh, for rougher landings however the big unknown for me right now is that what a beast this thing is going to be 
when we stick iNav in it and we can fly for days because remember this that little motor only pulls about an amp and I, all that flying which you saw uh, just a few moments ago I was cruising around on no more than half throttle a third throttle for the majority of it one or two points half throttle I, I didn't need to go more than that because it had plenty of power in it and it was coping with the turbulence over those trees so yeah well done Zoe HD thumbs up from Matty yeah did like it there's more legs in this one I've got like I said I've got multiple flying spots which I've been waiting for a model like this to be able to get in be agile and to get back out again uh, and this is going to be absolutely perfect for it I just sincerely hope I just don't end up sticking it in the drink in the future so with that said that is the Zoe HD Dart if you have any questions or comments let me know down in the video uh, underneath this video on YouTube. Of course, remember, this model was bought out of my own money for my own abuses. I'm genuinely impressed with it. Can't wait to go on and do some more with it. Thumbs up from Matt. On that note, if you're new here, I'm Matt. Welcome aboard. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button underneath this video because the next video could be a build overview uh, for installing iNav and getting this out and doing some FPV in with it. Uh, it could be the Maiden and the Daddy Drac, or it could be the other model over there, which is a 1.4 meter Eagle model, which I'm also setting up for FPV very shortly. Oh, don't forget to press the bell icon on next to the subscribe button so that YouTube notifies you when the next video is out. And with that said, happy days. Really impressed. I cannot wait to get this one out flying tomorrow. Josh has already messaged as well. Can I take that over and show him as well? Uh, yeah, I, I, I like it. So, with that said, for myself, Matt, cheerios!